everybody, this is Dr. Joe Borio, this week's Thought Flash. And uh, kind of exciting uh, today because we just finished our season for football and we uh, lost one game uh, and we had a phenomenal uh, game today and uh, we're into the playoffs. So my little, my little guy Vito, who you've seen in a lot of our Thought Flashes and who introduces me with my son Joey at a lot of our events and who's been in, uh, been in Italy and a lot of things when you look back over the last few years, uh, it's pretty exciting. But uh, uh, his, little, his team is Mighty Mites that I coach. Oh, we had a great game today, and uh, we won uh, four touchdowns to nothing, and uh, it, was, uh, it was good. Vito had, uh, in case you were wondering, Vito had two massive tackles, stopped a, stopped a touchdown uh, early in the game and uh, with a breakaway play and uh, ran the ball a couple times. Uh, he, he had a great game, great game. So, so that being said, that's exciting. A, a little bit more house cleaning. What do we got? We got November 4th and 5th. You guys hear me talking about it. i got to tell you, as a, as a coach and as a chiropractor, as a colleague, I hear more and more people complain and talk about the challenges there are in, in practicing chiropractic. And i got to tell you, you know, you're going you're gonna to have the opportunity to come to one of the offices that you know sees more people in a day and more people in a week than than just about any office in the world, and uh, and you'll really gain a lot from just being there. We're going to bring in Dr. Billy DeMoss. Uh, I'm going to be there, and we're going to talk chiropractic all Friday and all Saturday. We're going to talk about nuts and bolts. It's it's going to be a great event. It's November 4th and 5th, and uh, you fly right into Syracuse. You can drive up to Syracuse. Uh, a couple of small hotels are right by the office, and uh, we have one at my office every year. Should be the biggest event all year, and uh, I would ask you to bring a couple of colleagues. You know, why not come up and spend a, a day and a half at an office and and see uh, see how it resonates with you. And and if you if you walk away not being a client, well, you, you're still going to walk away for uh, for the hundred dollars that you paid for it. Uh, we had an initial offering of. Uh, of uh, docs with a special, we've already filled that up. I mean, early registration's already filled up. So for those of you who want to come, it's ninety-seven dollars uh, for the uh, for the event, and it's going to be uh, it's going to blow your doors. Okay. That being said, giant versus pygmy. I got to talk about this real briefly. Um, you know, when I think uh, about a lot of the challenges, you know, a lot of chiropractors have challenges with how to run a business, how to run an office, how to run things efficiently. So, so there's certainly challenges that I see there. But the biggest challenge in our profession, to be clear without any hesitation, is, is what this book is about. You know, when you, when you read Giant versus Pygmy or, re, or you read The Fellow Within, you know, the bigness of The Fellow Within, when you read books like that, what BJ's trying to explain is, is innate, the universe, that there's something that resides within you that is infinite, that is all-powerful, that is all-knowing, that is highly intelligent, that has an intention, that has an objective to do one thing, and that's to serve your body. When you guys listen to me talk about Francis uh, Bacon's uh, comment on uh, um, that the, the body isn't just a group of organs, right? It's an intelligence served by organs. And when you really think about the chair of philosophy who talks about that, and you, and you couple that with what BJ's talking about, you couple that with with ancient wisdom of the East, you know, talking about as a, you know, as as above, so below, and you and you start really listening to the words of of ancients thousands of years ago, and then you you read those words in a metaphysical, quantum, mechanical view of the words of D.D. Palmer and B.J. Palmer, and you realize that man, these guys really had a view of health. The and and I like to use the intention of health, the objective of health, you know, that we're meant to be healthy. And that it's not mysticism, it's not even spiritualism. There's a there's an intelligence, a metaphysical aspect uh, in the universe, and that's what universal intelligence is from, and it gives birth to innate intelligence. And uh, that's what this book talks about, and it's it's my favorite book out of any book that I've ever read uh, of BJ. And I love the brochure that's originally published in this book, and then it was put together with with Fred Barge uh, some commentary, which I just I just love it. And, um, you know, you, you just read so many of these words um, that BJ talks about, and you realize that, you know, when you read William Mayo, instructions from teachers of books teaches a man what to think, but the great need is that he should learn how to think. And when you hear quotes, the epigrams of, of uh, BJ, 
talk about you know education is constipation of the mind. He doesn't mean that you shouldn't benefit from education. What he means is that the problem with the education at the time and even today is it's institutionalized. It doesn't just teach you what to think, but how to think, and that that stagnates independent thought. You know, B.J. Palmer was a member of the Free Thinkers which was Albert Hubbard out of Aurora, New York. And there was a group of them, Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, some of the greatest thinkers, men and women that didn't think within the box, that were with that, that thought outside of the box. They were able to step back and see that. You know, Albert Hubbard went to Harvard and dropped out of Harvard because he said, you know, they're, they're structuring the way I think. They're going to ruin me, my, ruin my ability to think. And that's the problem that we see in, in now is it's worked again, you know, working against us is that you have traditional medicine and we are all affected by it. I mean, you as the chiropractor are affected by traditional medicine uh, being the paradigm and you're still kind of stuck and chained in your mind of some of those thoughts and concepts. But the world is, you know, and then you come out and say, look at there's this, there's this intelligence of the body. It's always trying to make you healthy. People look at you like you're a local yokel. They think you're crazy and you're not crazy. Um, but having the ability and some tools to take what your understanding and the, and the right understanding, the truth, and trying to to uh, you know discuss that with with people and trying to motivate them, influence them in a different way of thought. That's the that's the challenge because once they see the value, practice is easy. You know, I mean, my practice is is essentially easy in many ways. I certainly you know there's challenges when you see hundreds of people in a day. I mean, that's a different kind of challenge, but. But the point of when I say easy, what I mean is it's a lot easier when you have a large number of people that see the value of what you do as a chiropractor. As long as you nurture that all the time and you and you uh, dip them in that principle as often as you can, uh, it becomes much easier and practice becomes a lot more enjoyable and fun. You know, and from that standpoint, certainly. Um, you know, I just you know, there's so much of this book that's to read. If you don't have it, I certainly would encourage you to to um, um, to review it, you know, one of the things, the one cause, one cure, for a book by Fred Burge, one cause meant one cause of disease subluxation, but this is simply not the not true. And his study of giant versus big one clearly indicates BJ, BJ realized that other factors, including environment, were involved in the cause of mankind's discomfort. And here, in his own words, I will let him tell you exactly how he felt on the subject, taken from, the, from his book, and I'll have time to read it. From the book Bigness of the Fellow Within, I personally consider this to be one of the very best explanations, and he calls this the passage. And, it, and it's certainly something that's you know too long to read in a thought flash. But um, you know, I think you need to really submerge yourself in the in the philosophy. I think in the, in my closing moment here that I talked about it last week that the world isn't flat; it's round. You've had the glimpse, the ability to see that the world is round. Question number one, are you going to honor that truth or are you going to pander to the rest of the group that says it's flat? Why that's important to understand is the, the men and women that died for this profession didn't go to jail, as I said this over the last few weeks, to get the license to crack somebody's back to make their headache go away. I mean, to make their backache go away, to treat sciatica. That isn't why we went to jail. Others were manipulating the spine prior to D.D. Palmer's adjustment. He was very specific in what he said, that the adjustment using a spinous or transverse process to move the bone to allow for nerve flow, intention, objective. And, and certainly the description and understanding of that changed as years went on. But it, went, it started allopathically but became something really of a caring of innate, that you nurtured, that you're a steward for that person's innate intelligence. And that your job as a master carpenter, as a sculptor, whatever you want to call it, in order to care for a dentist, right? To care for the health and well-being of that person's spine for the rest of their life. Not so that their back doesn't hurt, though that's part of it. I, I don't deny that. But not so that their back doesn't hurt, but so that the nerve energy from the brain to the body can, can express itself. That their body works the way it's supposed to. That's the job of a chiropractor. It's really understand important that we understand that and, and make that clear distinction, especially now at a time where the where the, the profession itself, a large part of the profession, is searching for a new identity because they're trying to pander for acceptance. It's nothing more than a lack of certainty. 
Guys, I say this every time I do a public speak. I want to tell you this, a public speech, I want to say it now, and that is that every generation has the opportunity for greatness. You know, I, I maybe out of, out of self-centeredness, I want to be part of that generation. The question is, do you? Uh, we can't do it alone. So we need a lot of chiropractors. It'd be nice to have 55,000 chiropractors on the same page. We change the world overnight. Um, guys, this has been Dr. Joe Borio. Join us November 4th and 5th. I'd really love to see you, your family, bring, bring your wife or your significant other. Spend a day and a half learning more about who we are and what we do and how being part of what we offer could certainly not only change your practice, change your life, but it'll change the lives of all you serve. And my point of doing this is that I can change the world, that I can change the profession and help help the profession change the world. Guys, it's been Dr. Joe Boyle with this week's Thought Flash. May your name always flow from above down with full, innate, and universal expression. Have a great week serving others. I'll talk to you next week. My best friend came.